It's early January 2023 out here on a job with my friend Kyle in Licking County, Ohio. We're going to be using his forestry mulcher to do a bunch of invasive species removal on about a 30 year old reverted pasture. So it's pretty common in Ohio that these parcels, old farms get split up into a whole bunch of smaller pieces. And then a lot of these places just really get let go. People will build houses on them and stuff. You know what they have is the back 20 or 30 acres. And a lot of times it's really rough. So up here we got a lot of different invasive shrubs with a lot of invasive vines on top of them. This landowner's got about 30 acres of that. So this is a situation where we're not even wasting our time going in there trying to herbicide it. It's just too dense. It's also at a really good size where it's not huge. So this forestry mulcher can do a really good job of clearing that all out and just getting us back to square one. And then the first growing season, which will be this summer, about June, we're going to come in and do a herbicide application on basically the whole area. So all the plant vegetation, for the most part, that's going to respond here is going to be non-native and super invasive. We get a lot of still grass in this area. We got oriental bittersweet, privet, bush honeysuckle, autumn olive. They're the first ones to recolonize these sites and they come in really, really aggressively. So you got to have a good follow-up plan, whether you're going to come in and do some mowing to maintain those. But the majority of these non-native species, you just have to herbicide them, get them killed out. And then in this case, we're going to use some overseeding of some native species to start to do a full restoration on this area. This is a really cool landowner. He gets all that and he was trying to do a little bit of this by hand and he just realized he just couldn't get it done. It's just too gnarly of an area. I don't blame him. So Kyle has a really specialized forestry mulcher that we use for this stuff. You'll see what this thing does in a second. It's pretty awesome. Hopefully it's going to be the answer for this landowner and leave this property in a whole lot healthier state for all wildlife. Just get a lot better stuff growing out here where the landowner can enjoy it. See behind me gnarly, gnarly stuff. Invasives on invasives. Unfortunately, that is reality here in Ohio on a lot of properties anymore. This is kind of what the future is going to be like. So we take it all the way back to the ground. And like I said, you got to come back in with herbicide to get the area kind of just tame for a while. Then you can do some reseeding and fully restore the area. I've just been walking around a little bit more back in this area. And as you can see behind me, I'm in a jungle and it's an Asian jungle and it's weird because we're in central Ohio, but guys, the native ecosystem that's supposed to be here is gone. And this type of stuff took over the entire property. I don't know what that means for the next hundred years in our state, in our region, in the United States, just in the world, but invasive species are becoming, you can see it, beyond a big problem. There's no forestry generation. There's no wildlife habitat. Insects aren't adapted to using these plants. The whole ecosystem is really going down the toilet. And it's up to us. It's up to you. It's up to me. This is what I do for a living. I get to help landowners restore and take care of their properties. And it is fixable but it does cost money. That's just the reality of it. Most importantly, if you own land and you paid thousands of dollars to acquire it, or you inherited it from somebody else who worked hard to earn it, get out there and know what's growing on it and take care of the place. It's yours, you own it. So don't let this happen on your property. This right here is bush honeysuckle, super invasive shrub. There's one oak tree right here is an oak that tried to grow and look how it got completely swallowed up and pulled back in. Your property will turn into a complete wasteland and get completely engulfed by this stuff if you let it. So learn some ID on some of these species. That way, if they're on your property, you can nip them really quick and get them under control, get them out of there where they're not dropping seed. So I just want to show you really quick, this is Oriental Bittersweet. You can see this vine crawling up this tree. Here's another one right over here. Gets into the canopy and then does that back there in the background. You can see that nasty layer that literally swallows the whole area whole. And the only way to really deal with it is, one, you can herbicide and spray it if it's at a height that's safe to do that. You can come underneath, you can basil spray individual stems, but when it's this bad, we got orientals on oriental plants. So that's why we're completely mulching this whole thing to the ground and restarting.
get accomplished. The area was just totally unusable and totally unproductive. And we were growing species that are from other places in the world. That's what was taking over this guy's entire property. It was awesome. We got an opportunity to come out here and help him. We're going to continue pushing this whole area behind me up this hill. He wants to do this whole hillside. Well, again, we'll take the same steps coming in the growing season after clearing, evaluating what's growing. If it's undesirable, coming in with a herbicide application, controlling the non-native invasive species, monitoring, evaluating, and repeating that process until either we determine that there is no usable native seed in the site, or we can get control of those initial flushes of invasives, and then we can start to reintroduce native species back onto the site. And on this site, we'll probably use a combination of native grasses and wildflowers, and using prescribed fire to maintain this site. A lot of these invasive species are not fire adapted, whereas a lot of our native, native plants in our ecosystem are. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. If you got any questions, drop them down in the comments section. I'll do my best to respond to you. And if you need some help with the project, jump onto nativelandscapesohio.com, get into the contact section, and I'll personally reach out to you. I'd love to get in touch with you. Thanks for watching.